sign of the hour that took place and will not happen again is what the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith in the Sahih, no doubt about it, that the day of judgment would not come until a fire comes out in the Arabian Peninsula, in Hijaz to be specific. The Prophet ﷺ specified Al-Hijaz, a fire will come out from its light, the necks of the camels in Busra, in Sham area in Syria, would be lit at night. People would see it. So it's huge fire, huge light that would be lit, light the whole of the Arabian Peninsula and also shed light to a Sham district. Now, this fire was recorded. Historian spoke about it. And it came out in the year 654 Hijri. Those who reported it were an Imam al Nawawi, Al Imam ibn Kathir, and also Abu Shama al Maqdisi. They all spoke about what had happened from a number of different sources. In a nutshell, what had happened was a volcanic eruption that took part east of Medina in that year and it remained and stayed for about two months. What was so miraculous about it? There was a great change in the world. 2,000 kilometers to the northeast in Iraq, in Baghdad, the capital, Reporters said that there was huge floods until the whole of Baghdad or almost most of it was submerged under water from the river Dajla, which means that something took place due to that volcanic eruption. What was so strange about it? What was strange that in the first three or four nights before the eruption, there were earthquakes and everything was shaking and trembling and they were hearing horrific sounds of banging and, 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 and earthquakes and something that they cannot describe. And on the fifth day of Jamad the second, they saw the earth throwing lava, throwing sparks like Allah Azza wa described in Surah Al-Mursalat that Hellfire throws sparks as if they are as big as the camels. The yellow camels, so huge, the sparks. And what's coming out comes out like in castles. So huge, so big that it started throwing fire everywhere. And there was this river of lava that was moving on. And the people of Medina were terrified. They did not have anything to defend themselves against this. And you know, such acts of so-called, quote unquote, nature, people don't have any means of defense. A tsunami could come and it would kill hundreds of thousands of people in seconds. You cannot do anything. When Allah Azza wa wants it, when Allah wills it, it's gone. An earthquake that lasts for 15 seconds, you've seen what it made in Japan. You've seen what it made worldwide. These are the soldiers of Allah that no one can stand in front of. When Allah wants it, when Allah wills it, that is it. It's the end of the day. However, it was not hot in the sense that people died. No one died. And it remained for almost two months. Yet, it was astonishing. The, uh, the river of lava was about three meters high and it was like four kilometers in width and the length they could not calculate and it did not approach Medina it was all surrounding Medina going through the mountains and through the valleys and blocking some valleys blocking some uh, 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 passages there and people were, were terrified some of the historians said we came all the way from Yemen when we heard this and we went to see it and it was huge and scary. And when we drop 
leaves of trees or of palm trees, it doesn't eat it, it doesn't consume it, it doesn't burn it. But whenever it passes through rocks, it melts it. So subhanAllah, this volcanic lava was not hot and it did not burn anything except rocks. And nobody died, no houses were burned, nothing else was burnt ex or consumed except rocks. People were terrified. They, the minute it took place, and for the consecutive two months or so, they went to the masjid, they took off the turbans, they went in repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal. The judges and the scholars went to the Amir, to the leader of Medina at the time, and told him, you have to repent. And he went to the masjid, he repented, he set all of his slaves free. He took all the money that he gathered from the people wrongfully and unlawfully and he returned it back to the people repenting from the money because this is the norm the rulers of cities have unlimited powers and they would embezzle they would steal they would put their hands on different properties and say these are mine this is mine and if someone objects to them they throw him in jail or they take all of his belongings they have no one to fear not even Allah but when they saw this lava when they saw this volcanic eruption they believed in the hadith of the prophet of Islam and they reckoned that it is close to uh, doomsday so they started repenting and giving everything back to its people the emir the leader himself he, as re recorded in the books of history he suspended and lifted stopped altogether any taxation because Taking taxes from the Muslims is haram, it's forbidden. Why do you take taxes unless you have a need for that? In normal Muslim states, you don't take taxes and it's forbidden for you to take taxes because the whole government, the whole country is supposed to suffice itself. Taking taxes from the people is sharing my earnings and this is something I worked for. You have no right to take any percentage and that is why the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, when Ma'iz ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, was stoned to death for committing adultery and he testified against himself and he said, purify me, give me the capital punishment, I cannot bear this sin. When he was stoned to death, one of the companions said a bad word about him and he said, don't do this. Either him or, or the Ghamidiyya who committed also adultery and was stoned to death. He said that he repented, a repentance that was so genuine, if a man who collects taxes repented it, Allah would have forgiven him. Which means that collecting taxes is one of the greatest and major sins. Taxes are forbidden in Islam. So the Amir himself said no more taxations. And not only that, in these two months, the historians say you would not hear any musical instruments or any duff or any kind of entertainment in Medina. Everyone was terrified. It was a horrific scene. They were so afraid of what's going to happen. And they believed in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the Sahih where he prophesied that this would happen. Historians say that, one of the historians say that I was 14 years old when this took place and I heard one of the Bedouins in Busra in a sham saying that there is a strange phenomenon the light there is a light coming and we can see the necks of the camels exactly as they didn't quote the hadith because they did not know it but he was reporting it that exactly as the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, through that period of one or, or two months the sun and the moon never came up except in a state of eclipse because of the volcanic ash uh, that was in the air so this took place and it happened and it will not happen again this fire coming from hijaz from medina there will come a fire that would throw or draw everyone and push everyone to their uh, day of mahshar but this will come in the major signs inshallah uh, when we talk about it